So today we're talking about why sound design is essential in order to create a better video. How to, you know, get more emotion in your videos and how to draw the viewer's attention. So to demonstrate this, I, you know, grabbed a little piece of video from last week and put it side by side with and without sound design to check what the difference is. So as you can hear, the difference is drastic. Here's how it's done. But first, I wanna to talk to you about the sponsor of this video, Artlist. And before you think this video is biased or anything, I was using Artlist well over a year ago before they contacted me to collaborate with them. So yeah, I highly recommend their service. And I found out that Artlist was the most time-saving, fun experience for me to use because their search browser and their you know way of tagging system is just Phenomenal, works really well, and there is so much music and sound effects added daily that it's, you know, you, you can find new music that you've never heard before, even though you're using Artlist for over a year. That's insane. So if you're stoked on using this service as well, check out the link in the description below. You'll get two months for free if you sign up for an annual description, no, subscription. And um, of course, you help me out a little bit as well. So it's highly appreciated. Thank you. Enough chit chat, let's start the tutorial. I'm doing this in DaVinci Resolve, but if you're doing this in Resolve, no, Premiere Pro or Final Cut, just follow along because all the steps that I'm taking are identical to one of these programs. They're, you know, not bound to DaVinci Resolve. That's cool, let's start. All right, step number one is whenever you're ready to do sound design, the first thing you'll do is analyze the frames. So, you know, you start at the beginning, obviously, but you start checking what happens in the frame. So for example, this is an airplane shot or shot from an airplane, you know, it's very calm and nicely. So I wouldn't add too much to this. Also on this drone shot, you know, it's open air, there's water visible, perhaps there's some birds flying, you know, that stuff. What we try to do in sound design is we try to emphasize what already exists in the frame. Yeah. But we also try to add what could be in the frame or for example walking in a forest and there's no birds visible but we know that there are birds somewhere on the trees you can you know get bird sounds and just very subtle put them on the right side or on the left side very deep into the forest you know by dragging down the volume all that kind of stuff really helps to draw the viewer into your video and into your story step number two is feel what kind of framing you have now, for example, if you have a very close and tied up shot, you don't need as much uh, sound effects because a close up of a human face already consists of a lot of emotion. But if you have a wide shot, for example, this shot, no, this is a sort of medium close. If you have a wide shot like this, a lot of stuff is happening. Yeah, so you see water, there might be some birds, there might be, uh, I don't know, something else like a lot of wind. You can add all these things in to really create a sort of a coherent world for the audience to watch. The third step is basically go to Artlist or go to any other website that has your sound effects on it, maybe your own pack, and start grabbing sound effects that will work with your project. For example, there's a lot of water shots here. You know, it's it's basically all water shots. Um, so the thing that I'm going to search for is ocean sounds. So I head over to Artlist and I, you know, make sure that I'm on the SFX page. And here you'll find all these different sort of uh, moods or, or things you can search for. Well, there's water, but there's also ocean. So go to the ocean one and then just, you know, start listening to the sounds. And as you can see, I already downloaded all of them. Yeah, just, just check out all the different ones. And, you know, the good thing about sound design is that sometimes even this clip, a fishing boat diesel motor, Calm C, can help in some situations, even though there's no fishing boat in your framing or in your project whatsoever. So sound design really comes down to creativity. You have to experiment, you have to try different sort of sounds out and maybe it is working for you. So let's say you downloaded all these, these different sounds for your project, you know, put them in your folder and drag them into your project and then you start layering start dragging in sounds and start experimenting with the sound so this is what i made of it so the first one let's analyze this real quick the first one is just a sound of an airplane i just searched for a sound of an airplane 
it's basically a lower rumble sound makes it believe more that you know you're actually in an airplane then we go over to let's go to the firelight page so here you know we go over to the drone shot and if we listen to the music or to the sound effect that i put underneath it's basically just ocean sounds very subtle it doesn't have to be that much i also put some seagulls underneath very subtle then going down the line now it's getting interesting because you know get this solo off now there is a wave breaking and there was a challenge for me in this one because the footage is in slow-mo so typically there's no audio on there also the audio that my camera recorded was like you know literally just water sounds like <laughs> Whoa. Um, so I had to basically invent this entire sound myself. So what I did was I searched for some impact sounds. That was, for example, this explosion sound. So I layered that on top of this one. Take this one off. Just some noise, like white noise, basically, um, that sort of gives the viewer the idea that there's water moving. Then again, some seagulls that just very subtle on the right side so I panned it to the right and then we also got some underwater ambience so that really gives the feeling that you're you know in there that's the feeling that I want to emulate here so going further here there's some very intense water noise coming in because I wanted to have this part exactly when my friend made the turn. Yeah, so I want to have that feeling that some water is flowing over you. So if we isolate this sound, you can really hear the difference. And then I also like to add some lower rumble. Usually when a big wave breaks, there's a low rumble going on because there's so much water being thrown that there's some sort of like a uh, audible, you know, so that's what I did here. Some deep low rumble and then here as well. And that sort of gives the idea that there is something big going on. And then this part was very important for the, for the video. So, you know, here you've got a riser. Yeah. So I'm, I'm building up to something big, let's say. Yeah, so if I isolate this one, it sort of draws you in there, like, you know, a place where you cannot escape. And that's what happens in the frame. So we've got the water shot, underwater shot. And what I did with the normal music, with the, you know, the music that plays underneath, is I basically just put a equalizer on it and I really isolated the sound. So let's see what happens here. So... So that's the sound with the equalizer on, and this is the sound without. You can really hear the difference, and it really sells the feeling that you want to achieve here. Yeah, you want to have the viewer sort of in there and really like uh, close and tight. So that's what these two effects sort of do together. Then I layer this on top which is basically underwater sounds, just bubbles and, and, and whatnot. So if you play that together, it really sounds like something very sort of intimate. <laughs> Step number four, you know, make it so the entire sound design is coherent and is in one piece, essentially. The last thing that you want is you know, having the viewer being distracted by, you know, sounds that suddenly cut off. So what you do here, and this is, you know, done in every other NLE, like every other editing software, exactly the same way as it, it's been done in Resolve. You just use these faders. Yeah, so I fade it in and I use this sort of keyframe mark thingy to make the, you know, the, the, the fade steeper or, or less steep, basically. So let's listen to this entire thing if I would take out the fade. It sounds ridiculous. Okay, so now fade it in. Yeah, 
as you can see, it's a world of a difference because, of course, the wave is, you know, developing, getting bigger, getting bigger, and suddenly it's breaking. This line of this, you know, this fade will sort of boost that entire movement of the wave. And then suddenly when it, you know, reaches its peak, then shock, he sprays. So that's why fading particular things in is so important. So whenever you're done, you, yeah, you got to listen to it 10 times, I would say 20 times, maybe even leave it overnight and check it back in the morning when your head is, you know, fresh and you, you know, you, you haven't, you know, listened to this entire day for the entire day and then listen to it with a fresh mind. And that is the moment when you start picking up um, failures or mistakes. There's three things that I want to consider whenever I am doing sound design, and that is use pen to really sell it. Then if something is indoors and is further into the frame, so farther away from the camera, I use reverb to give it that space. And then lastly, I use volume to sort of blend it together with the rest of the video. All right. It all comes down to, you know, trying out things, downloading a bunch of clips from uh, from either Artlist or free freesound.org or whatever. I do definitely recommend Artlist because they have so many clips and they have such a good way of navigating through their um, entire, uh, how do you say that, um, file network. I don't know. I can't find the word in my head. But, you know, that's just very easy to, to use and it saves a lot of time in the long run. So, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Um, I'll answer all of your questions, always, every single one of them. So, um, yeah, cool. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Probably going to do a color grading tutorial in this video as well, or maybe on my reel. Not really sure. Anyway, uh, yeah, enough. I'm out.